Yo, welcome back to the channel. First, let me apologise for not doing a video for so long. It's just a little bit hard to keep all the plates spinning when you're a sole trader and you're working for yourself. It's a little bit hard to do the work, quote for the work, invoice for the work, keep books in order, keep the jobs coming in and find time to uh, cut up a load of video. I do have loads of footage, I just haven't really had time to sit down and start making videos from it. I'll, I'll try and see what I can do and see if I can get a few more out, maybe sort of fortnightly or something. But anyway, here's another video. I've, I'm doing a rewire. I've done a rewire recently, which was occupied. This one's not occupied. Completely different kettle of fish, a lot dustier. And um, I just thought I'd take you through this one this, in this video and just show you the difference between an occupied rewire and a like a void property rewire where there's no one living there. All right, well anyway, enjoy the video. Alright, so we're starting to rewire first day and we're just gonna take everything off. The boys uh, Ben's getting anything in, he's gonna stick it all in the corner. I'm gonna disconnect every circuit from the consumer unit. I look like a right idiot because I've shaved around my mouth times this morning because it was itching me. <laughs> I'm gonna disconnect all the circuits out of the consumer unit and I'm gonna put a temporary socket down there so we've got some slight power. I'm gonna let Ben run around. He's gonna disconnect every single electrical point. We're gonna keep some of the lighting. The customer wants to reuse some of the lights, like these wall lights behind me. And I think I only reuse the kitchen light as well. So we're gonna get them, we're gonna store them safely in the garage. And then uh, we're gonna unleash hell on this building and chasing all the sockets. It's a void. So that's fantastic. There's no one in. Remove a void. What it means is we can wire things slightly differently. We don't have to worry about things being turned on at the end of the day. We can we can wire it as and when we need to. We can lift up floorboards, leave the floorboards up for a period of days, and we can just crack on like that. So hopefully we should get this done a lot quicker than if it was an occupied rewire. So uh, let's crack on with this. So some other reasons that we're gonna rewire this place. I did an EICR. I usually give two prices, one for maybe a rewire, one for rectifying any problems. There's too many problems. You just wouldn't know where to look. All right, in here. Double socket on your way in. Well, and a single below. Wired in on the side. That's, that must be 0.5 flex there. Earth's not been put in. Um, I suppose you could class that as a portable appliance, can you? Okay, so we've got a few more plates hung off. As you can see, we've got a two core flex, which Supply sink on the other side of this. I, I'm not quite sure where he goes to be honest. He might do the uh, outdoor light. We have also got a flex here which seems to be twisted together and taped up onto this. Some white doorbell cable. And we've got, I'm sure there's a flex in here. Yep, there he is. And we have a flex. Oh, it joins them together. Got a couple of flexes there that seem to join these two sockets together. Light switch, again, it's, it's just flex everywhere. It's just flex and all the uh, fixed wiring. Here's a cooker point. I don't know if you can see this. The cooker does actually come through the holes. The fixing holes have a couple of cables coming through, which does the cooker, which is just here. They've come out of it in a bit of one mil. And this I've traced to a single socket outlet under here, which supplies the hob. We've got loose wiring underneath. Uh, this, that one's not too bad. Connector blocks. It's a nest of shit in here. Again, no earths. I know he's wired in flex. There's, there's obviously shit loads of juncture boxes in the ceiling everywhere. And just trying to find them would be impossible. Socket halfway up the stairs. I mean, probably not an electrical problem, but you, you shouldn't have that there. There's no reason you should have a lead on the stairs. I know he's in flex because I saw that. He's put his own down lights in. They are just connector blocks taped up in the ceiling, no fire rating whatsoever. So um, again, that's another thing. It's, it's like that throughout. There's a, there's a shower in here. There you can see it. But, 
as you can see there is no isolation for it there's also no circuit for it in the fuse board so i'm not quite sure how that even works i think he was fine but these is is, is a center light but there's been some additional wall lights put in and again i think they're like flex and they haven't got any earth on them in here i know that he is on a different circuit to him i think he's on the same circuit as him but at some point they decided they wanted to have an additional point there and i think they came off of the kitchen circuit below the kitchen is supposed to be a ring it's on a 32 amp it's the only 32 amp in the place but it's not a ring so it's just everything is just a kerfuffle it's loads of add-ons on add-ons and so hence we're just going to rewire it because trying to find all these junction boxes underneath the floor and rectifying stuff would just take far too long so i'm just in the process of lifting the floorboards up they're all tongue and groove but there are some that have been lifted up before as you can see and that's what i'm lifting up i'm just taking up the ones that have already been lifted up um just found this that's a, a typical typical example of what we've been finding under the floor and that explains a lot about the test values i was getting when i did my eicr and there's some more there's a nice little connect plug there Earths twisted together. Um, there you go, got some flexes, two core flexes. We've got a load of exposed single insulated cable. We have, oh, that's all right, that's telephone, so you can be in connect box. They've actually brought the earths into the junction box this time, but everything's exposed. And I think I can see a flex. There, and there's a flex. Brilliant. Oh, and there's another one down there. You're not going to believe this. That shower is powered by this bit of flex, too cool. Goes under the floor. Pops up here, went under the floor, into these connector blocks. Okay, my van is, um, today's Monday, I took the van home on Thursday and it conked out about five times on my own. Called the AA out, they couldn't figure out what was wrong with it. Yeah, so they had no pressure pumping the diesel into the engine, AA guy there was he was there for about two hours. He near enough gave up with it. It's like putting his tools back on the van. We'd already tried to put like another, I think put like another 20 litres of diesel in the van by then. Anyway, long story short, last result, he climbed on the neck of the van, gave the fuel tank a kick, came back into life again. The van seemed to be happy. He said it might be worth getting it looked at. So I took the van to the garage the very next day and yeah, lo and behold, it looks like we've got a pump problem. So I'm on my way there now. It's Monday morning. I'm going to leave the van with them. I'm going to commute back to the job to see Ben. And uh, we're going to crack on from there. So bish bash bosh. I'm going to try not to take a D zone with me today as well. Wednesday morning, I don't have Ben today, I'm on my own, 
fortunately all the chases have been done so today should hopefully be a fairly clean day as clean can be in a room while when i chase a wall out i like to run my chase down i'll stop it i'll sink my box in as perfect as I, as perfect as i can as, as, as well as i can so that there's, there's not much damage around the outside and then i'll actually drill down and into the back of my socket. Now, the reason I do this is so, when it comes to second fixing, I can hopefully screw my socket back. Sometimes I leave it in the bag that it comes in and I'll screw it back. No one will have to hang it off the plaster around it. Any electricians out there that, that do rewires, you'll know that there's, there's always an issue with your socket being screwed back and someone trying to plaster the damage around the socket, it's, it's a mess, it never works out. What should be a first fix and a second fix ends up in a load of revisits and it doesn't look as neat as it should do. So I do this, I can screw it back, put a bag on it, paints that can come around. The only thing they're gonna have to plaster is that chase. Now, that chase, I've done all, this is, you know, this isn't because it's a void, but on this rewire, I've done all this with an angle grinder, purely because, one, ooh, one, my tool that I use for chasing, you attach a hoover to it, it's got two diamond blades, it's, it's blunt and I didn't realise until I got it. And two, my multi-tool, which I love, is broken. Thanks Ben. But anyway, I've had to do all an angle grinder, so that's all angle grinder. I, I angle grind the chasers out. I very lightly grind around this because it's a round blade you can't go too deep, otherwise you're gonna get crisscrosses on the corners. So I did that just to break the first layer of plaster, then you can knock it out with a chisel bit, and then you can go hell to leather on the inside and chase all that bit out. Um, I'll see what I'll do. I'll whiz the camera around, we'll go for a walk around a job and you can see what we've done in two days. Yo. Look at that, oh my God, it's like I'm, it's like I'm having a baby. Let's get down to the gym. So, you walk in the door, we've started to pull some wires through, we've got the pendant for the hallway, we've got the smoke detector, that needs another cable, that's got to do the heat in there, and it's got to do the smoke on the top floor. Massive chase, that is because there's going to be a hell of a lot of wires in there, we've got the two ways for the upstairs downstairs, we've got the smoke detector feed, we've got uh, cables for the light switch on the other side of the wall, which is going to do the kitchen, we're going to run all our chases down here rather than have a chase on both sides of the wall. Now that is going to continue down and do the hallway socket, so it is a big chase, but there's only one. That is the only chase in the hall, and there won't be any chases in the kitchen, because we've made that one bigger. Kitchen, not going to go in there at the moment, I'm trying to keep the dust out. It's an old kitchen, they're not going to refurbish it. What we're going to do is we're going to run some wires down some boxing, which is on the other side of this wall. We're going to go underneath all the units, we're going to pop up, put little bits of trunk in on top of the worktop. It's not going to look brilliant, but we're not going to damage any tiles and we're going to put surface matted sockets. This is our route down from upstairs. The fuse board is about here on the other side of the wall. Just bringing them to here for now. And as you can see, we've done our thing where we've left a little bit of a gap. Again, there was a floorboard that we managed to lift up. We've reused the holes there. We've been pulling out all the wires as, as we go. There's some more wires to pull out over there. These walls weren't so easy to to, to do our nice little chase around we've had to I say we've had to that just fell out you can see the old plaster where the previous customer well, tenant occupier whatever you want to call it they it was this was a DIY nightmare they they did their own wiring and all these like there was just connector blocks down there there's going to be a mirror here with two independent wall lights to keep things in zone we've come down gone to a switch and we're going to Come along here, socket, socket, new light switch. As you can see, it's different. The, the switches are different heights throughout the property. We've kept them all 53 to the bottom, so it's the old standard height. Again, there's a hallway switch, and it is a completely different height. Look, if you, if you look at this switch as a comparison, he is he's lower, but he's quite close to the height. He's, he's probably about one inch out at the top. Come into this room, 
you know, he's, he's one inch to the bottom. We're well, probably not even an inch. He's, he's completely out, so. Hence why we've not, one reason we don't reuse the old switch is one, they're not deep enough, and two, they're just all at different random heights. My rods are such a mess. That's literally every single roll I own. I'd love to blame the apprentice, but it's it's probably me. It's me as well. I'm, I'm bad habits. You should really cut this off as as you do it. sockets, 1.5 is for lights, 6 mil is for cookers, but then that's it, that's their knowledge. And they'll attempt to do electrics because they know that. And it insults me because I did a four year apprenticeship and if it took me four years to know that and that's all I needed to know, it took me four years to learn that, then I'm like, it's just ridiculous. And one of the things which is really bad as well is, I mean, I can't be the only one. You go into someone's house and they'll go, oh, that's always worked fine though. Yeah, but that works fine. Yes, some so wired up. My, my, you know, my husband wired up, my dad wired up. Um, you know, Dick and Harry down the road wired up. It works fine. You know, fuse boards never popped off. And you're like, that's, that's not the point. You know, it probably does work fine, but if something went wrong with it, that won't turn off. That will just catch fire or you'll get electrocuted. You know, it's not doing what it's supposed to do. What you can't see is actually under the floor right now, every time you turn the shower on, that cable's getting red hot. And it's, in, it's going through wooden joists. You can't see that. Yeah, the shower works fine. But, you know, that's going to go up soon. It drives me mad. YouTube channel called uh, Life in the Day of a Shit Apprentice. <laughs> in the loft, it's Thursday, and I've run, we've done the lighting circuit. We've run a lot of Copex up here. It's an absolute shambles at the moment. We need to put some saddles in. It ain't happening tonight because it's nearly home time.
So this will bring us to the end of the video. Now, this is just a part one of two stages of this job. It's called a first fix. I'm going to briefly give you a summary of what we've done. So Monday, we turned up, I got Ben to remove all the switches, all the sockets, all the wiring that we could get to, all the light fittings, everything went out. We lifted up all boards that we had access to. We, we tried to lift boards that have already been lifted, just so we don't cause more damage than what was already there. Usually the boards that were lifted previously were the ones that were lifted when the wiring was originally installed, so normally get quite lucky. We can normally find um, a lot of the wiring by lifting those boards up. I removed all wiring from the consumer unit. I left the consumer unit in situ and I brought out a temporary socket, which was an RCD socket, which we used to run extensionally throughout the property. So we had power and, uh, you know, to keep the radio going. Now, I don't always do it that way. Sometimes what I'll do is, depending on the size of the job, I'll actually install a temporary site consumer unit. I've got a very small consumer unit. It's two-way board, goes on a bit of MDF, and it's got two metal clad double sockets underneath. Sometimes I do that. It wasn't a very big job. It wasn't worth doing it. I just, you know, one double socket was enough for us, so we did that. Now, um, so Monday, we, we pretty much gutted the place, but we also had time to go downstairs and chase out all of the downstairs. This isn't always the case. We was quite lucky. The kitchen is staying pretty much as it is. We're going to do it all surface mounted. The kitchen is a job in itself. A kitchen can take, you know, days sometimes, depending on how many appliances there are and how awkward it is to get inside the units. We didn't have to worry about that. So we spent one day downstairs Monday chasing out all the downstairs, which was basically just the living room and the hallway. On the Tuesday, I didn't have Ben. I had to chase out all of the upstairs, which wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. It was just the sockets, and as it was the old heights, one foot to the bottom wasn't a massive chase to do. So I had a couple of bedrooms to do upstairs and uh, the light switches up into the loft. Now, Wednesday, did I have been on Wednesday or was I still on my own? I think I'd been on Thursday. So Wednesday, I was still on my own. I managed to pull through all the cabling. I pulled through all the cabling and I poked it out of the holes in the ceiling and out of the floor. So I had all my cables in place. I had all the old cables cut out, ripped out, thrown in a pile, which we probably won't scrap because you don't get any money for it nowadays. And um, so all the cables were in place. On Thursday, Ben came in, gave me a hand, we brought all the cables to their points, put them in oval conduit, and we bonded. So it was, it was quite lucky on the first we got, got a lot done. On the first one we managed to get all the cabling in place, got it in the wall, and we bonded it. And then finally that brings us to Friday. Friday it was just crossing T's, dotting I's, there was a few sort of like stragglers, a few cables that I hadn't run. I don't think I'd run the... The thermostat cable needed to be run. I always forget that one. So I ran a new cable, a new free core cable from where the thermostat's going to be located in the living room. I've also rejigged it a little bit because the way that it was done before, the thermostat was actually on the staircase halfway up the stairs, and the programmer was down where the thermostat should be. Which, I mean, you don't really have to have access to your programmer. It's, it's a program. You set times in it, and it just goes on and off to whatever the times are you set. You don't have to manually keep changing it. Otherwise, there's no point having a programmer. So I've relocated that to the immersion cupboard slash boiler cupboard, and I've put the thermostat in the living room. Uh, I also had to run a shower supply. The shower, turns out, it has a hot and cold feed, so it only needed a 2.5 supply. It was only 150 watts. It was just a pump. So we managed to do that through the loft. Oh, that was another thing we did on Thursday, actually. We ran the lighting circuit. Ben gave me a hand because it's a loft, so obviously it's a Ben job. So we did the lighting circuit on Thursday. But anyway, long story short, we eventually managed to get all the cables and all. It's all bonded. It's all first fixed. It's ready to go. I've got a consumer unit in. I did a little video on here of the consumer unit going in. After the video, I disconnected one RCD and I disconnected, I think I disconnected about three or four circuits on the other side. So the only circuit I've got instated at the moment is the cooker circuit, which I've signed off. And it's not actually a cooker at the moment. It's actually feeding a metal clad double socket outlet in the kitchen which is going to be for the decorator so we can you know steam off the rest of the wallpaper and do whatever he's got to do plug in some temporary sight lights and he's going to give himself some lights around the property when he's doing some decorating although i don't think he's going to be able to work too late because the the neighbors are crazy um 
So anyway, that's that's pretty much the long and short of it. I'm going to return once the decorating has been done. Once the all my bonds, they're going to probably um, sort of tidy them up a little bit, put some uh, finishing plaster on them, sand it down, get it all pucker, wallpaper it, paint it, do whatever they got to. I'll turn up. I'll put all the fascias on, all the switches, all the sockets. I'll put the light fittings in. I'll um, I'll I can I'll be honest. I can probably turn up before that's done because I can still run a supply to the shed. That doesn't the decorating doesn't need to be done for that to be done. So if there's ever a day spare that I've got no work, I can turn up. I'll run a supply to the shed. I can second fix inside the boiler cupboard. That's all surface matted. I can do that. And I can also second fix the kitchen. That can be done. I can second fix the kitchen, do away with that metal clad socket, and they can actually use the sockets in the kitchen to power steamers and stuff. So I'd say I've probably got a couple of days' work. I can I can jump in there whilst they're decorating if I if I have a few spare days. But long story short, that's your first fix. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn up once all the decorating's done and I'll do another video for the second fix. Alright. Cheers guys, thanks for watching and um subscribe, watch another video. Uh, and troll me down there.